Today we are showing the esophagus, trachea and throat and explaining what you need to know about this anatomy to ensure safe tube feeding. Behind the parts is an outline of a calf so you can see where they are positioned. Here we have the tongue, then the throat area. This soft stretchy collapsed tube here is the esophagus which travels down to the stomachs. Just below this is the airway a semi-rigid tube which lies very low in the neck. The entrance to the airway is here. This is the only entrance and the only way milk or liquid can access the lungs. Fortunately for us there is an excellent system designed here so that in a conscious animal it is far easier for solid items to pass into the esophagus than into the airway. So passing a tube into the airway is very easily avoided provided you work with your calf's natural reflexes. As you can see the airway is below the esophagus so the easiest way to avoid the airway altogether is not to force the calf's nose upward. If the calf's nose is forced up and the tube is forced down you might encounter the airway. Note, even if you are aiming down in this direction, the airway will automatically close to prevent the tube entering. And because of the size and shape of the tube tip, considerable force is still required to push a tube through that entrance into the airway. To avoid any chance of airway entry, never force a calf's nose upward. Never force the tube down. And never push through any resistance. Essentially, never use force. Tube feet in a position where your calf's head is comfortable and relaxed, such as backed into a corner or comfortably sitting, and use soft hands to operate the tube. A flexible tube also means the tube can bend easily to take the path of least resistance around the airway entrance and into the esophagus, moving with the calf's natural swallow reflex, just like food. So that is our first point. Gentle handling, gentle hands and not forcing the nose up will ensure the tube avoids the airway. Our next important point is to always ensure you pass the tube far enough. The tube needs to reach a safe distance past the airway entrance and stay there the entire time fluid is flowing to ensure liquid does not access the airway entrance and end up on the lungs causing drowning. If you are concerned about not passing the tube far enough or accidentally pulling the tube out during feeding then simply pass the tube further down. Because this tube is flexible you will not do any damage and passing the tube further is far far better than not passing the tube far enough. Thirdly, how to check the position of the tube. Many people like to be able to check the tube position for extra peace of mind. Because the esophagus is a soft collapsed tube and the airway is a rigid tube, we can either see or feel for the tube tip moving within the esophagus. The groove in the neck where you find the jugular vein for IV treatments is the place to look and normally this is easily seen on the left side. This is because the esophagus it normally sits slightly to the left. Remember the side by thinking the esophagus runs to the rumen, which as you know is on the left side. Fourth safety point. It may look like the tube fits quite snug in the esophagus and may prevent backflow, but it can only prevent a limited amount. Therefore it is essential that the calf's head stays above the level of the stomach to prevent gravity causing fluid to run back up the esophagus where it may enter the airway. A normal comfortable head position is fine as the stomach sits low in the abdomen. A head down near your knees is dangerous so do not let the head drop. If you are very short you may not be able to straddle your calf as this will push the head down therefore you may need to stand to the side. The same point applies to overfeeding. If you overfill the stomach, the liquid will back up the esophagus. If unsure, 
double check with your vet as to how much you should be feeding. Which side do I pass the tube is a common question. As mentioned, gentle handling and gently passing the tube, leaving the placement up to the calf, is the most important tip. But to answer the question, if you were going to favour a side of the mouth to pass the tube down, it would be the calf's left side. As already mentioned, the esophagus sits ever so slightly to the left, so the left side is considered the better side to pass the tube. The airway entrance is in the middle. So if you pass the tube to one side, it helps the tube avoid the centre, and therefore the airway entrance. But you shouldn't be creating a forced downward angle where pushing into the airway entrance would be an issue. So you can see with the top of the throat open like this, that the airway entrance is quite vertical rather than horizontal. This is another reason why it's much easier to pass the tube into the esophagus than it is to pass the tube into the airway. Lastly, you can see how delicate the associated tissue is. The esophagus is very thin and the structures around the throat are fragile with limited blood supply and pretty poor healing ability. This is why it's important to be gentle and to use gentle equipment, particularly a flexible tube which will move with the calf preventing soreness or injury which will slow recovery and consequent drinking time for your calves. To summarise the key points, 1. Avoid airway entrance by gentle calf handling so the head is comfortable and gentle hands on the tube. Most importantly, do not force the nose up or the tube down. Learn how to double check the position for extra certainty. 2. Pass the tube far enough and make sure it stays there throughout feeding. And three, ensure the head never drops below the level of the stomach.